Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, bless. Once again, it's Captain Matt with another 15 minutes with the captains. Today, we're going over Romans 10 and 9, confess and believe. One time I asked uh, somebody, hey, if, if, if I was to ask you, how do you get the kingdom of heaven? What, what scripture would you say? They say Romans 10 and 9. And I've heard that a lot throughout, you know, the time that we've been teaching. So we're going to break that down today. 15 minutes with the captains. So give me the book of Romans, chapter 10. In verse 9. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. But guess what? No understanding when they read that because they go to damn near the end of the book in the middle of a chapter isolate one scripture and say oh that's what it means. Now, nah, we're going to get some understanding today. Jump up to verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So it's for Israel to be saved. Israel to be saved. That's the context of the beginning of the chapter. Read. For I bear them record. Bear who record? I Israel. Read. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Want to know why? Give me Matthew chapter 15 and verse 3. I'm going to show you why they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God, by your tradition. By what? By your tradition. So they was having traditions that were not lining up with the actual scriptures. They were holding their traditions higher than the actual scriptures. They had that zeal, but they didn't have any knowledge. Give me Acts 15. Start at verse 1. Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So they were zealous for the law. Yes, they were, because they wanted to make sure that our brothers were circumcised. But they said, you got to be circumcised after the manner of Moses. Nah, no. The manner of Moses involves sacrifice. When you read Leviticus chapter 12, it involves sacrifice. But when Abraham was circumcised, did he give a sacrifice? Or was his circumcision based on his faith? It was a token of his faith. Go back to Romans chapter 10. So they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. The knowledge of who? The knowledge of Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They went to establish their own righteousness. That's why they developed traditions. That's why they told the, the, the scattered Israelites, nah, you got to be circumcised after the manner of Moses. You can't be saved if you're not. Imagine telling a man 38 years old that he got to go and be circumcised the eighth day. He's 38 already. How the hell is he going to do that? So you mean to tell me that this man cannot get the kingdom of heaven because he wasn't circumcised the eighth day and gave a sacrifice? Nah, it's not how this works. Abraham was 99 when he was circumcised. You understand? We have to understand that this goes into Christ now. They went to, they went to establish their own righteousness. They didn't submit themselves to the righteousness of God. One example. Give me Matthew 23, 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. So y'all taking the tithe, but y'all omitting the weightier matters of the law. Read. Judgment. They had, they had poor judgment. Remember, they brought a woman caught in the midst of adultery, but didn't bring the man. 
judgment was completely off. Read. Mercy. They showed no mercy. They were ready to kill you with, with no regard. Read. And faith. And they had no faith either. Faith in what? They had no faith in Christ. They had no faith in the Messiah. They had no faith in the prophets, honestly, because they was holding more to the law of Moses than they were to the faith. Read. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Go jump over to verse two. Same chapter. Matthew 23, verse two. Uh-huh. Saying, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They sit in Moses' seat. Why? Because they were judging the nation of Israel. They were the leaders. They were the ones that would judge the matters. Read. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. So whatever they telling you to do, do it because they're teaching you out of the law. They're zealous for it. Read. But do not ye after their works. Don't do after their works. Why? For they say and do not. Because they're hypocrites. They say and they do not. So while they go to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God because they say and they don't do. Go back to Romans 10. Romans chapter 10 and verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Christ is the end of the law? How? Because he was that sacrifice. Go on over to Matthew 9, 13. Christ was that sacrifice. And we're going to read from Christ's own mouth. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. He said, go learn what that means. Because in 1 Samuel, he said, it's better to obey than to give sacrifice. God would rather you obey him than to have to give a sacrifice because you didn't obey him. And that's what the scribes and Pharisees was missing. Further proof. Jump over to Hebrews chapter 10. And let me get verse five to show how Christ is now the end of the law for righteousness sake. Hebrews chapter 10, verse five. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Don't sacrifice an offering, read. But a body has thou prepared me. But a body has thou prepared me. Hebrews chapter 9 and Hebrews chapter 10 goes into diligently how the sacrifices were now on Christ. Go back to Romans 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 5. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So you had to live by every single thing that was the righteousness of the law. You had to have a red heifer. You had to have the waters of purification. You had to burn the sacrifices in a certain place. You had to have certain sacrifices for certain sins. You had to have those things. And if you couldn't sacrifice, you held on to those sins. So he knew he wasn't going to be able to keep on sacrificing, especially going in and out of captivity after captivity. We wasn't going to have the resources to do that. Read on. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Because they didn't believe that Christ ascended. Read. That is to bring Christ down from above. Uh-huh. Or who shall descend into the deep? And they didn't believe that Christ would die and then rise again the third day. Because they had a zeal for the law, but not according to knowledge. They didn't submit themselves to the righteousness of God knowing that a Messiah would come, die for the people, and let it be known that he would raise up eternal. Caiaphas knew that in John 11. But the rest of the scribes and Pharisees, they didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to believe that. Read on. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? Uh-huh. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith. Which we preach. The word of faith is faith in Christ now, not animal sacrifice. He said, I would desire mercy and not sacrifice. 
sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. All of this is talking about the unbelief of the scribes and Pharisees and the fact that all Israel, all 12 tribes are now coming back to God through Christ. Read. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. How do you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus? Let's see what confess actually is. Go to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 33. Let's see when we're talking about confess, what are we talking about? Because Christians say that stuff all day. You got to confess the Lord Jesus, but they never tell you how. Read. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 33. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name. Confess Jesus. Read. And confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. So when we confess his name, what are we doing? We're repenting. That's what we're doing. Remember. From the start, he said, I want all Israel to be saved. Then he started saying, hey, they're going to establish their own righteousness. They didn't submit themselves to the righteousness of God. They didn't believe that he died. They didn't believe that he ascended. They have to confess Jesus. What do they have to confess? We're going to show you. Read. First Kings chapter 8, verse 34. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel. And bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When we confess Christ, we're confessing all of the things that they denied previously. We're confessing that he came for the people of Israel. We're confessing that he died and he rose again the third day. We're confessing these things. Go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. And when it says confess... We have to know what it's talking about. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. What are you confessing? You're confessing who Christ is. You're confessing the color of Christ nowadays because they knew he was black back then. You're confessing who he came and died for. You're confessing that he did away with animal sacrifice. You're confessing that he is now the mediator between God and men, between the Father and us. That's what we're confessing. Go to John 9.22. The book of John, chapter 9 and verse 22. These words spake his parents. Because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. That's why he said, you got to confess. Because the leaders of the Jews, if you confessed who Christ actually was, you was thrown out of the synagogue. They'll put you to death for that. They did not want you to confess the name of Christ. That's what it's going into. Go to Psalms 105, verse 1. These are the things that the Christian church will refuse to explain because they can't. Psalm chapter 105, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. When you call on his name, when you confess Christ, you're making known his deeds among the people. The fact that he came for the nation of Israel. He died for the nation of Israel. And when he comes back, he is the savior of the nation of Israel. That's what we're confessing. Go back to Romans 10 and 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Why was it important to confess that? Because we have to confess who Jesus Christ came for, what he came to do. And we've read it in the scriptures. He desired mercy, not sacrifice. Prepare a body for me, not sacrifice. The blood of bulls and goats don't take away sin. Christ's death 
took away our condemnation. Under Moses, we were condemned to death. Under Christ, we have a chance to repent. The scribes and Pharisees wasn't believing in that. Read it again. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Read verse 7 again. Verse 7, or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Because some of them, like the Sadducees, didn't believe that there was a resurrection. You have to believe that there's a resurrection. You have to believe that this man came for the nation of Israel, the entire nation, all 12 tribes. I'm going to show you one confession, John 11. You know what I want? John 11. John chapter 11, verse 48. 46. Start verse at 46. 46. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees. And told them what things Jesus had done. So they started telling the Pharisees, hey, this guy's doing a whole lot of stuff. Read on. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Uh huh. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. So if you believe on Christ, you're believing in the miracles that they spoke of, that they confessed. They confessed the miracles that Christ did and they believed. That's what the scribes and Pharisees did not want. That's what the chapter of Romans 10 is going into. Read. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and, and, and nation. They're going to take away our place, meaning our position and our nation. We're no longer going to have control over the people because they're going to believe on Christ, which means our money is messed up. So now nah, we're not having that. Whoever confessed Christ, throw them out. They keep on confessing, we're going to put them to death. Read. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is, it, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. It said, it's expedient that one man should die for the people that the whole nation perish not. Without sacrifice, we were condemned. The nation of uh, Israel or the uncircumcision or the Gentiles, they were condemned because they weren't keeping none of the laws. We got to understand the historical context behind what the scriptures are talking about in the New Testament, because Christians are befuddled when it comes to the New Testament. Caiaphas knew it's expedient that one man should die for the nation, that the whole nation perish not. Read. And this big he not of himself, but being the high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. What nation? The Jews, the nation of Judah, read. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. The children of God that were scattered abroad were the rest of the tribes that were not in Jerusalem. Those were also under the promise of Abraham. Those were under the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you can't leave them out of the promise. Because the promise was made to Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob, and his 12 sons, not just three. So Romans 10 and 9, confessing, is going into confessing the works of Christ that he did for the nation of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. Confessing the works of Christ that he did for the nation of Israel. And we have a confession from a Jew in the scriptures that Christ was supposed to die for the nation of Israel. And the children of God scattered abroad. Matthew, nope. go ahead. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Confession. That's what we confessing. Christ came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what it's talking about. So if you wanted to be saved, 
First of all, you got to understand that Christ came for all 12 tribes. Then you got to understand that that black man died and rose from the dead. That is how you show your faith, because you have to confess that. Because those that did confess it was getting put to death. All right. So that is the understanding of Romans chapter 10, verse nine. Hope y'all were uh, edified. That's going to be 15 minutes with the captions. I'm Captain Matthew. I you watching New Orleans and we say Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.